Nucleophilicity is the term we use to describe how nucleophilic an atom or a molecule is. In general, good nucleophiles have electrons in high energy, highest occupied molecular orbitals. These tend to be atoms that have negative charges on them, especially if those negative charges are not delocalized. Localized on a single atom, those tend to be the best nucleophiles because those electrons reside in a high energy, highest occupied molecular orbital. So all of the anions that you see here are good nucleophiles. As a general characteristic of how we might be able to identify good nucleophiles, they tend to be stronger bases. Compare these to the neutral species that you see at the bottom. These are poor nucleophiles. They all have lone pairs of electrons, but these electrons all reside on atoms that have a zero formal charge. Consequently, the electrons are in a highest occupied molecular orbital that's lower in energy. They tend to be weak bases and poor nucleophiles. Throughout the course of this webcast, we're going to try to understand what it is that distinguishes the various nucleophiles in these categories. The series of oxygen anion nucleophiles that you see here illustrate the point that the stronger the base, the greater the nucleophilicity. The way we characterize base strength is by looking at the pKa of the conjugate acids. Acetic acid is the strongest acid, and the proton on methanol is the weakest acid. The weaker the acid, the stronger the conjugate base, the greater the nucleophilicity. The stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base, the weaker the nucleophilicity. Anions are going to have electrons in higher energy, highest occupied molecular orbitals, compared to the corresponding neutrals. And for this reason, anionic nucleophiles are always going to be more nucleophilic than the neutral counterpart. If you compare neutral water to hydroxide anion, the higher energy, highest occupied molecular orbitals of the hydroxide anion make it much more nucleophilic. And of course, this corresponds to the base strength. We see the same behavior for nitrogen and sulfur. The anions are going to be more nucleophilic. And now if we compare a series of anions for different atom types, but all residing in the same row of the periodic table, we see that in nucleophilicity increases from the right to the left. It tracks with basicity, as we can see here. Fluoride is a poorer nucleophile than the carb anion, but more fundamentally than basicity, it really tracks with the energy of the highest occupied molecular orbital. The energy of the electrons in the highest occupied molecular orbital on this carb anion are higher in energy than the energy of the electrons in the highest occupied molecular orbital of this fluoride anion. The higher the HOMO, the greater the nucleophilicity. And that tracks with basicity as well, and we see that for the third row in the periodic table. At the bottom of this slide, we get a hint that something else matters. It turns out that solvents can influence nucleophilicity. Solvent plays a role when we're comparing nucleophiles of different sizes. Solvents are classified as to whether or not they can donate a proton. Aprotic solvents, like dimethyl sulfoxide that you see here, do not have a proton to donate. They cannot hydrogen bond. If these aprotic solvents are polar, as in dimethyl sulfoxide, they'll bind the nucleophile's counterion, such as potassium, is the counterion to this nucleophilic anion. They'll bind it by a dipole cation interaction, and that binding will leave the nucleophile exposed or not shielded by the solvent, and it will make it more nucleophilic compared to a solvent where this cation binding does not take place. The main point to keep in mind is that in polar aprotic solvents, nucleophilicity continues to track with basicity, but that's not the case for protic solvents. Before we move on, take note that for aprotic solvents, the interaction is between the solvent and the counterion. Now compare that to the case with protic solvents. In the case of protic solvents, hydrogen bonding takes place, 
and that hydrogen bonding is with the nucleophile itself. The strength of that hydrogen bond is going to depend on the anion size. Smaller sized anions are going to have a high concentration of electron density and be very tightly hydrogen bonded and for that reason the larger the size the better the nucleophile in protic solvents like water or methanol or acetic acid. And so for protic solvents the nucleophilicity trend runs opposite to base strength. Let's take a look at how this plays out for a series of anions of different sizes. In polar aprotic solvents, nucleophilicity tracks with basicity, but in polar protic solvents like water, the trend is just the opposite. The very small fluoride is very tightly hydrogen bonded, and for that reason, it's not accessible to its haloalkane electrophile. The very large iodide is much more accessible because it's not very tightly hydrogen bonded by the water. The same nucleophilicity trends that we've seen in this webcast will be common to other kinds of organic reactivity.